Good evening, everyone. We're happy to have you all here with us this evening. Uh, the mayor is joining the meeting by uh, virtual. He is in training. So as Mayor Pro Tem Felicia Harris, I am going to be uh, chairing the meeting on this evening. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order uh, for uh, March the 16th, 2022. And if you would please, uh, Ms. Uh, Reverend Rowe, if you would please come up and lead us in prayer. And then immediately following the prayer, we will proceed and have Commissioner Kaysen lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would stand, please. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Once again, we come thanking you, O God, for another day. We thank you, O God, for yours been with us and you brought us here. And as we come to this meeting this evening, we pray that everything will go peacefully and in order. We pray for our commissioners, give them strength. We pray for guidance and all who have come. Bless us, guide us and direct us. In Jesus name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to thank Reverend Rowe for leading us in prayer and Commissioner Kaysen for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. we also like to thank all of you who are here with us on this evening uh, for being here and being um, active, uh, concerned citizens in the uh, city of Brunswick. Before we proceed with the printed agenda, uh, I want to verify and make sure if there are any addendums needed to the agenda. Uh, as there are no, no uh, addendums needed for the printed agenda, we will proceed with the public comment period. And the first uh, person that will address the commission will be Mr. Rob, Robbie Tucker to address the commission regarding code enforcement. Mr. Tucker, if you would come please. Thank you. Uh, if you would state your name and your address, please. Sure. My name is Robbie Tucker. I live at 11 Wausau Island Circle in Riverside. Been there a couple of years now and never had any issues with the city. That's why I decided to build a house. And um, long story short, back in say June of 20, I was building a house and I had contractors in and out like most people do when they build a house. And um, one of my contractors went to lunch and they had their trailer in a cul-de-sac. That's permittable. Mr. Tommy Dixon comes by and gives him a ticket or a warning. I go to city hall and confront him about it. He said, well, I got a call from a neighbor. I said, this is right during the daytime. You come by after five, the trailer's in my yard. I've had probably 12 contractors at one time over there and it's not a big cul-de-sac. Anyway, long story short, a few months ago, Code enforcement visits me again about one of my vehicles and it's a tow truck. I said, okay. I said, well, I built the garage for it to go inside and the other can go outside. And they give me a copy on the internet or the email of a statue in the city of Brunswick where you can only have four vehicles per dwelling. So if you got a husband and wife and three kids, that's not gonna happen in the city of Brunswick. They're gonna to have to get a divorce or one of the kids can't drive. I ask you to revisit that. If you got two kids or three kids and a husband and wife together, raising them in the city of Brunswick, you can't park five cars in your driveway. I don't see the problem with five cars. If you can afford them, you could have 10. Once you got insurance and a tag mm -hmm. and try to speak with them about it and it didn't go so good. They just had other things to do. I talked to Mr. Hunter a couple of times and we could never get on the same schedule. So, that's one of my issues. And I asked him, I said, you know what? I said, if you guys want to step up code enforcement and do your jobs, I said, let's do it. I had an associate give me a letter and we have it. I didn't make copies for all of you guys. I apologize. I don't do good with a copier. I was working on it and I tap on it and it quit working. Anyway, I have one copy. I can submit it to you and you okay. can pass it, please. Okay. And we'll make sure everyone gets yes. a copy. Yes. And it states that um, I sent them a questionnaire, I guess, or a letter about, oh, let's see. 
maybe 20 properties or so, maybe seven, eight. Well, this one only has nine in there. And long story short, um, the first one was MLK. They told me that you cannot have a semi in your yard. It gets code enforcement rules. I said, okay. So there's a semi trailer in the yard. They go back and investigate it and they find the ordinance to support it. I see um, 1900 block of MLK. Cars park in no parking zones with signs clearly posted all the time. They send this back to me and it really kind of disturbed me when they said this is a police matter. Like made me feel like they are, ben the police are beneath them. Code enforcement can give a ticket because as in the towing service, when we go get a abandoned car or something with code enforcement, the police is already there. So I didn't, I don't do good with that at all because I don't feel like they're better than the police department. They're sworn officers of the court and the law do your job. I mean, that's how I feel about that. And then there's another one, 2200 block MLK, cars in the roadway, same thing, contact the police department, non-emergency number. 3327 Franklin, there's 10 cars in this yard at all times, usually six to 10 cars, okay? Car lot down the street at 4th and Norwich only has four or five cars in his parking lot. They go by there and tell me that the four, four automobiles in the car was licensed and tagged. Where they got four from? Did they even ride by? I ride by there often because that's part of my, my route. Um, also, there were some cars at um, 3320 Franklin all the time. Um, 18 hour block of Norwich Street, cars parked in front of the signs, police department issue. And I asked him about 2814 Norwich Street. Me and Mr. Tommy talked about this two years ago. There's tanks in the ground. We used to belong to Mr. Ralph Babb. Mr. Ralph Babb sold it because he was getting worried that those tank tanks were leaking. And they are a little bit then. And Mr. Tommy, I wish he was here. I hate to speak about somebody not being here, but I'll tell you exactly what he told me. He's been out there then. He saw the sewage and motor oil in there because the people that lived there before had a camper. There is no power there now. There is no water, but them tanks are contaminated. I sent him a letter about it. Code enforcement tells me EPA, EPD is aware of the tanks. They are empty and they're vented. They're not empty. And the vents have been cut down by the guy that bought the place, which is illegal. You can't cut that stuff down because of an explosion. Because you got sewer gas, oil, and petroleum gasoline from a station in there, and you're gonna start welding and cutting, you don't, you're asking for problems. But they said they, um, EPA was aware of it. I talked to the EPA several times, Mr. Jonathan Dance, and he gave me a copy back in 2000. Let's see. Apologize. Back in March of 17, I talked to Mr. Tommy two years ago that they went out and looked at it and they did see some oil in there. And um, they had some tires on the facility, got the tires up and um, the oil is on the ground. And that's from the EPA. But the city tells me that um, the tanks are empty and vented. I don't believe them according to the EPA, EPD. So I just feel like I'm not getting my money's worth with them. And um, I ask about the paint factory on 17. When you come into Brunswick, there's always a hate thing over there, a bunch of cars. It's a nuisance. Actually, it's a probably contamination site too because there's been a paint factory. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a lot of lead in there. I asked them, I said, make them clean up a little bit. They said, there's no violation at all. I asked about the Boba Home Park at um, by New China. It used to be a nice place when I was a little kid. I can barely remember it, but it was nice. People lived there. That's been 70s. And now it's gone it's horrible. You know, I go by home sometime, pass it by. I look over there and I see rats. Sometimes they wave at me, sometimes they don't. I said, they got it made. And code enforcement don't feel like it's up to them. It's nothing to do with them. What is their job description? Um, I feel like they should do more. And I feel like I sent a letter actually back in. Um, about this same thing back in November 30th, 2021. I sent it, a copy copy to the mayor at the time. And um, Miss McDuffie, I don't know if you got it or not, but it was supposed to be sent to you too. But anyway, I never heard a word back from them. And 
My thing is, if you're gonna do it, do it right. Don't selective enforcement, they call it. I call it picking and choosing. If code enforcement wants to do their job, do it right. Don't pawn it off to the police department. They're shorthanded. They got enough important stuff to do. Says so we're about an illegally parked car, <laughs> you know? So that's pretty much some of my issues I have with them. And um, one more thing I'll tell you, after they give me a hard time about cars in my driveway, which I don't have but three, you know, Lord knows I can't have no more than four or, you know, like that's a ticket. So I ask you guys, you have the power as a city, the government gives you the power to revisit that and rewrite it. Because once again, husband and wife and three kids, they can't live in the city of Brunswick because parking violation, excuse me for that, but I'm just, you know. So anyway, um, I was over by Wisteria back in December, car broke down. And it's amazing how some things just look you right in the face. I look over there, two cars, code enforcement, two cars, a RV and a boat trailer. I said, I'll be darned. That passed the four car rule way back there, didn't it? <laughs> I got pictures of it too. Okay. So I really think that we need to talk with them about it and just make it even. The city, like um, Mr. Cosby Johnson, the mayor, he's gonna clean it up and you guys are gonna help him. Are you, he's gonna clean it up, you guys are gonna help him, you guys are gonna help him, whatever. Y'all work together. <laughs> we need to. But if they pawn stuff off on different departments, what we got them for? You know, I mean, they get paid to do a job and they should work and get paid for even, you know. Mr. Tucker, we, we appreciate you bringing that information to us. So just for clarity to make sure what the expectation is of your bringing this matter before us is what so that we can get that documented and we can also proceed in, with staff on addressing that as well. I just like to see the city revisit the four car rule for a house with a family in Brunswick. That's, I never heard of it before, mm -hmm. but they sent me the law on it. And I was like, I've never heard of it in four, oh Lord, 49 years almost. I was mm -hmm. like, that really bothers me. And you guys have the power to revisit it and rewrite it or make an amendment, I'm sure, because the city has their own power. And I think that's a good thing because Husband and wife and three kids, not the city of Brunswick. Okay. And um, I like for them to do the job. Uh -huh. If you see a parked car, don't pawn it off. Do your job. If you see something breaking the law, they're sworn oath, do it. You know, and this, thank you for your time. Thank you. We appreciate control, it. We appreciate the information. Mr. Cosby. And we will, we will uh, direct staff to follow up on that, on your concerns. We'll, we'll follow up on your concerns. And, and we'll get with, uh, with the attorney to, to take a look at what you have addressed with us on this evening. And you guys are responding to me in like 30 days and write or something in five days? I'm not sure of the time frame, um, but, but yes, but we, we will respond to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and Mr. Hunter is in the courtroom, so he has uh, been here to receive that information as well, as well as our city attorney and city manager. And so as a commission, we appreciate you bringing that to us. And, and I do agree with you that we should not do selective uh, code enforcement. And so um, that is not the city's aim uh, or we up here would not allow it to be the city's aim. So we appreciate that information. Thank you so much. All right, we'll proceed on with the uh, next uh, person that will address the commission, which will be Ms. Naomi Speakman. And she will address the commission regarding uh, naming a park in park or area and after her husband, Mr. Othella Speakman. Ms. Speakman, if you would state your name and your address, thank you for coming. My name is Naomi Collier Speakman, 1804 G Street, Brunswick. I'm here on behalf of my late husband, Coach Othella Speakman, passed away September the 9th of the 8th of last year. Othello was raised up in Glen County, attended school here. Upon graduation from Risley High School, he went to Folk Valley State at that time. Upon uh, entering Folk Valley, he was drafted into the Army. Once he completed that, he went on, he came back and finished and received his bachelor's degree at 
Fort Valley State. Once he uh, finished there, his first job was here at Sarah Millette Junior High. Once there at Sarah Millette, he was a PE teacher. He was also employed by the city and on recreation department. He supervised the pool at Orange Park. Once they closed Orange Park, he went to Howard Coffin. He supervised swimming, baseball, football, track, whatever there was at that time. He was also at 8th Street. After being there, he retired after 30 years in the school system, 20 years with the city, both jobs at the same time. Once um, he retired, he was a member of Grace United Methodist Church. We have three children three grandchildren. And I'm here on behalf of him, hoping that you would name something in the parks or at the swimming pools in honor of him. Thank you, Ms. Speaking. We appreciate your bringing that information before us. Um, I'd also like to give a comment on uh, Coach Speakman. He was my uh, PE coach at Glen Middle. I want to date myself. I don't know how many others he may have um, taught, uh, been their coach. Uh, he was my coach at mm -hmm. Glen Middle School. Mm -hmm. And that was one reason I couldn't wait to get to Glen Middle was so that we could play crab ball um, mm -hmm. at Glen Middle. That was one of the things my brothers and my, my brother and my sister, my older siblings would always come home and talk about was Coach Speakman. Yeah. Um, not only uh, that I have an opportunity to be in contact with him at the schools through the school system, but also through the city recreation, right. which also uh, groomed me to be sitting here as Mayor Pro Tem to tonight. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had an awesome experience with him as a person, as a gentleman, and as a as a mentor for uh, so many in the community through city recreation. And so um, I don't know who else may want to give a comment regarding uh, Coach Speakman. But if there are others, I will open up that opportunity for you, um, but also to find out and make sure of what the avenues are that we would need to proceed with or pursue in order to uh, consider your, um, your proposal. Okay. I'll open the floor to anyone else, uh, mayor or any other commissioners. You, you can speak. Ms. Speakman, this is uh, Mayor Johnson. I just want to tell you, I know uh, my family has deep regard for, for your family and Coach Speakman and everything that he's um, been to our community. I, I just echo the words of uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I know that he is he's more than just a member, but was one of the pillars, one of the people that every child coming through this community got to see, got to hang out with, got to learn from. So I appreciate you being here and continuing his name and continuing his legacy. And uh, we promise to do everything we can to to look into uh, preserving that legacy here in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Thank you so much, Ms. Speakman. And uh, we, someone will follow back up with you, either uh, the mayor or city manager or the uh, city clerk. We appreciate that so much. And we look forward to continuing his legacy. Thank you all for being here. We'll proceed on with the uh, printed agenda. We have a presentation uh, by Ms. Anita Collins, board member of Coastal, of Coastal American, Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission uh, to give a presentation regarding that commission and an updated uh, update on the strategic plan. Ms. Collins, if you too would state your, your name, I just stated it and your address. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Anita Collins, and my address is 1602 Tillman Avenue, Brunswick, Georgia. 
I would like to, I know our city clerk has provided you copies of the updated strategic plan. And basically my presentation is just an update for some of you who may not be aware of the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission. It was via a joint resolution by the city of Brunswick and Glen County that in October, 2013, the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission was created. In Article 2 of the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission bylaws, the purpose is defined for the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission. Includes the um, Article 2 of the bylaws includes the commission shall promote African American history, property, and heritage in and around the city and county. The bylaws indicates the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission shall pursue the preservation and revitalization of properties that are of historical and cultural value and significance to the city of Brunswick and Glen County. The commission shall research and make recommendations to the board of commissioners of both the city and county regarding the development and implementation of programs designed to enhance and promote African-American historic preservation. The commission shall promote and raise awareness of Glen County's African-American historical assets to others both within and outside Glen County. The commission shall develop clear and concise standards for designating properties or land as historically significant to African-American heritage, excuse me, African-American history and heritage, and to make recommendations to the city and county for approval of same. Also, the commission shall examine and identify assets of African-American historical significance within the city and county using standards adopted by the city and county. The commission shall build and assist in helping to build and develop partnerships and relationships with other organizations and associations to further the purpose and mission of the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission. April 2014, seven residents were appointed to serve on the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission. June 2014, an orientation and training meeting for the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission was conducted. The first chair of the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission was appointed June 2014, and that is former judge, former state court judge, Orion Douglas. In 2014, the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission asked and received permission from the Selden Advisory Board to use the old headmaster's house, which was also known as the park manager's house, as a base of operations. The Glen County government in 2014, August 2014, allotted $15,000 to make improvements to the headmaster's house. We held our first meeting in the Selden headmaster's home, also known as park manager's home, in February 2015. August 2015, through funds that were uh, received um, from the city, the first strategic planning session was conducted and that was conducted with the assistance of uh, a consultant. Throughout in various parts of time in 2015 and 2017, the former uh, chairperson of the commission has requested in 2015 and 20, through 2017 funds to hire a part-time executive director. The Black Historic Preservation Foundation, which is a nonprofit partner with the Coastal African American Historic Preservation Commission, which was uh, to assist the commission with fundraising and to this date, no funds has, have been uh, raised by that particular foundation. March, 2021, the uh, Coastal African, African American Historic Preservation Commission received new members and resumed meetings. We updated the strategic plan that you have before you last year, 
um, June through August, September of last year. And we um, have uh, reviewed it after having revised it. And it is now submitted before you for you to review and approve the strategic plan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Collins. Uh, so uh, my, my question is to uh, Attorney Corey, um, are we approving or have the authority to approve? Okay, all right. So we're just- um, just. Sorry, I didn't realize my microphone was on, not tonight, just presentation only. Okay, I'm just for presentation only. Right. Okay, all right. Um, uh, Ms. Collins, we appreciate you coming in, uh, presenting this information uh, to us. And so I'll open it up to any of the other commissioners if they have any questions or the mayor, if you have any questions uh, regarding the presentation. Um, I have a question as to um, any fundraising efforts. I know you said that y'all had a partner, but no funds have been raised. Not to date. Okay. So is there a reason over the time period of the organization that y'all have not made further efforts to do fundraisers? Well, the organization has really been in a posture of not actively conducting fundraising events simply because that was the charge of another entity. Our charge was different to, uh, not to be raising funds. However, with the guidance of the city attorney and the county attorney, that is still something that uh, we need to determine because originally that was not our charge for the commission itself to raise funds. Okay, and then um, y'all, you had a list of goals. Yes. Um, I can't remember what page it was. I think it was page nine of your, um, of everything that we had. But I was just curious um, if, if from those goals, if you had split out short-term immediate goals versus yes. longer-term goals. Yes. And how, how is that progressing? Um, that is progressing. And as a matter of fact, um, we will be coming before the commission um, within the next couple of weeks with a, uh, plan that has been created to boost the organization as well as to boost uh, the community itself. Okay, and it, I think part of your mission is to coordinate and um, dovetail in, but not repeat any services with other nonprofit organizations that are trying to also um, highlight African American history in our uh, in our area. Yes. Yes. And to how, assist. Oh, to okay. To assist, to support, and guidance, but that does not preclude us from also initiating on our you know as a commission that is a part of our charge as well to initiate and to do our best to uplift the African American story because there's a lot to be told. And we've already lost a lot of people that could enhance that effort. And we just don't want to continue that pattern. Okay. And how many active members do you have now that are part of- Are part of the commission? Mm -hmm. May I count? Five. Okay. We have one on, on temporary um, abs, abstinence from the commission um, for medical. She had a baby. Okay. Thank you. The floor is open for any others, mayor, any other commissioners um, with any questions or comments. I'd like to just confirm you have um, the 2021 through 2024 commissioners listed in the packet. Are those the people that you're referring to as your commissioners? Uh, yes. Okay. Any others? 
uh, Commissioner Martin uh, did touch on um, the fundraising question that I had. Um, but for clarity, the commission is not charged with fundraising efforts. The foundation, can you repeat the foundation's name again? Black Historic Preservation Foundation. And I, mean, I need to make an adjustment to one of those names. Okay. So may I give that to you? I just thought about it. Okay. And so uh, what, is, what is the uh, role that the commission plays with uh, working with or overseeing uh, the foundation in those fundraising efforts? What is the role of the commission in terms of spearheading them? Yes. Not actually, not actually putting the events or fundraising efforts together, but how do you hold the fund, the foundation accountable for or for reporting back to you any um, of their efforts? That's not a part of our charge to hold that foundation accountable. Mm -hmm. um, that foundation is to be of assistance to mm -hmm. us, but their bylaws are very different from what our bylaws are. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to they wanted to be of assistance because the, the bylaws for the commission are very detailed. Uh, the strategic plan as a result of the bylaws are very detailed, all right? And some of those things, because we are volunteers, just like you are volunteers, mm -hmm. so to speak, that you get paid. Um, we are volunteers and some of the work that is required requires uh, help administratively. Mm -hmm. All right. So without a staff per se, then that is why the Black Historic Pre uh, Preservation Fe uh, Foundation was was formed mm -hmm. to be able to help us have administrative personnel to do the work, for example, of doing uh, oral interviews, doing research, all right, planning and helping other organizations. For example, we have the um, Black African-American Cultural Center on, on Albany Street. We are to be of assistance to that organization. We have historic properties that we need to make certain that we have standards developed, present, presented before you for approval, standards to help those properties be designated as historic properties and how we can help to rehabilitate those, those properties. So the arm of what this commission was created for is quite broad, but we also need to have administrative assistance. And we knew that that is why the Black Historic Preservation was to help us on that end. But still we can do what we can do with, the, with what we have in terms of being of assistance to our community, as well as to other organizations that are, are, are more equipped per se, to go about preserving the African-American history, properties, and heritage of this area. So yours is not the preservation of, yours is the, uh, the assistance, the assisting of other organizations. It's both, but it's more, we can identify from our perspective as a commission based on what our bylaws indicate. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're also to not take any steam from any other organization that is also created as a nonprofit. We are not a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you have a nonprofit or if even if it's a for profit organization, then we can be a, a resource, a help to improve what their efforts are for uh, African American preservation, heritage, culture, properties. Okay, because I, I, I just wanted to make sure I have clarity for myself and how the foundation comes into um, partnership with the commission yeah. in, in helping to achieve uh, the strategic plan that has been set out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, candidly, not much. And that's a disappointment. So do we allow that to hold us back from what we are charged with? We decided not so. Okay. We do our best to do what we are charged with doing and then that as a nonprofit and they have bylaws to adhere to, then hopefully they will, will do so. But we can't, as a commission, 
continue to allow inactivity, mm -hmm. do the best with what we can with what we have, and we will be more successful as opposed to doing nothing. Okay, that, that, that's, that's kind of what I was trying to get an understanding um, of is if the foundation was actually active. So with-, with It's still, excuse me, commissioner, it's still a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Is it a valid nonprofit? I cannot answer that. Okay. In terms of whether or not they are re-up with the Secretary of State, that I cannot answer. Okay. Okay. So they're not they're not per se an extension or arm of the commission. No, no, it's no. It's its own separate. It's entity. its own separate. Not it's a nonprofit. It's own. It stands on its own. But a part of it being created. That's what I was going to ask. Was it created for this be, purposing? Or? To assist the 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 Coastal African American Historic Preservation but Commission. That has not happened. And that has not occurred. Okay. Okay. All right. Those, did I answer you? you? You did. You did. I was just trying to get more into. Um, and I was trying to be. And, and I was trying to be more kind. Understood. For somebody who's very blunt, I was trying to be more kind. And I appreciate that. Okay. We, Thank we you. definitely appreciate that. Thank you Thank so you. much for the presentation. Um, are there any other questions, comments coming from the mayor or the other commissioners? Thank you, Ms. Collins. Thank there you. Being no other comments. We appreciate the presentation right. um, and the information. And so we'll review that and uh, follow up on the strategic plan. Thank you so much. You. Item number four, um, update. Executive Director of Downtown Development Authority, Mr. Matthew Hill, to give an update on activities, uh, statistics of the Main Street Downtown Development Authority. Uh, Mr. Hill. Good evening. Mayor, Thank you so much. So this is for those of you who have been around. Uh, this is our annual report on data that was submitted to the Department of Community Affairs as part of our a uh, national Main Street designation. Uh, we have held that designate, Brunswick as a city has held that designation since 1986. Uh, and in 2017, you'll recall, we were awarded the Georgia Exceptional Main Street designation from Department of Community Affairs, Office of Downtown Development. And last year, or in uh, 2020, we did renew that. So we're on a second term of a Georgia exceptional Main Street. Uh, in front of you is the printed report. It's a draft. The uh, real ones will be out soon. <clears throat> and please, if you find any glaring errors, let me know so I can get them corrected. Uh, so last year in uh, 2021, it's been a recover. It was a recovery year, uh, but. With that, we had over 800 events in our downtown area that drew 99,000 people to downtown. Um, the number of events were down slightly, but that attendance number is up from 2020, 2020 by 3,000 people. Um, we think some of that was our uh, city manager's work with us to improve the holiday decorations and um, we look forward to continued improvements there. Uh, last year, we had 6,500 volunteer hours that's valued at $136,000. Um, rehab projects took off like uh, dramatically last year. We had 24 projects start with a value of over $9 million. Uh, that value of investment is an all-time high since 2004. 2004 is when we started tracking these numbers. So that's, I'll refer to that quite often. Building sales, we had 37 sales in the district with a value of $11 million, another all time high. Um, new businesses, 50 new businesses opened last year. That's number two since 2004, but those new businesses and three expansions created 270 new jobs, which is another all time high. Total public private investment in the downtown area and our area, remember, includes Gloucester Street, Norwich Street, Newcastle Street. Um, the total pri public private investment was $21,215,000. 
and that's another all-time high, that uh, the investment ratio, which is the amount of private investment for every dollar put into a pro public dollar put into a project is $54. So for every dollar the public sector put in, whether it's a grant from us or um, enterprise zone incentives, $54 were returned by the private sector. Um, <clears throat> another highlight from last year was we worked with the city manager and the economic development department and you on the commission to develop the back to business Brunswick programs for COVID relief. Coming up in 22, we're working on design with the city on Mary Ross Park enhancements, um, continuing it to improve the holiday lighting to try to make downtown Brunswick even more of a destination for people looking at lights. Uh, we have been working with the College of Coastal Georgia to have a youth advisory council, and that is <clears throat> finally progressing a little bit, so you should be seeing something from them shortly. Norwich revitalization, we're working on that, and we're working with a couple of property owners on, on Norwich Street to try to have a satellite office for the DDA, so we can have an office over there. It may be events two days a week and development two days a week where it'll be more convenient for businesses on Norwich Street to visit us rather than to have them come all the way down here, even though it's not that far. But we think having a site there on Norwich Street will be helpful. Um, for events this year, Bragg is again, that's the bike ride across Georgia. That's ending in Brunswick again this year. That's thousands of people who have ridden across the straight state that will come to downtown. Uh, we are working on a new event for the fall, a uh, um, cook-off of some sort, probably barbecue since the Lions Club hasn't done theirs. We think we're going to pick that up and we're going to continue to increase our advertising for the year. But if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, this is just an informational meeting. Thank you, Mr. Hill. We appreciate the update. Um, I'll open the floor for any questions or comments. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor or, or the commissioners. You know, I was uh, over, uh, Matthew, thank you for this report, by the way. Uh, very impressive. Uh, and, and lots going on down here. It really is. I was sitting in the pickup line over at St. Simon's Elementary with my grandkids the other day. And I had a thought that uh, Everybody in the education system is, is at the max. It, it, of course, it looks like everybody everywhere is at the max right now. It really does. We're all on overload. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit right here. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I watch people over there. I get there early so we can get our grandkids and get on back over to Brunswick. And I watch from the bus drivers to the SROs to the teachers that are out there working. And I know how strapped that, uh, the school system has been all the way through the system. I just wonder if you have thought about perhaps a, a dedicated first Friday evening for educators and uh, would, would offer a recommendation to do that. And also, I think our first responders, if, if we haven't done something like that, certainly deserve a, a, a Friday night dedicated to them uh, where we all show up and, and, uh, and, and show appreciation. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you've done that or not. Well, we haven't done one, I mean, specifically to honor first responders. I know a couple of years ago we had some uh, police and fire vehicles at First Friday, but that's a great idea. We'll get. Yeah, that is a good uh, idea. It's, it's just unbelievable just sitting there. We get there about an hour early at the same time and, and sit there on Demory and watch. And the moving pieces that are in those puzzles, if they're at St. Simon's Elementary, they're at every single school. You know, every one of them, they're all going through the same identical thing. It, it really, I think I was talking to you on the phone call about something while I was really. Really, the magnitude of my fault was in, in trying to be sure that we do something to recognize these folks and to thank them. In the same fire first response, that's always been on my mind, and I just have to say. Okay. 
Yep, I'll get with Jennifer and we'll start. We've got a couple now before school gets out. So. I hope everybody up here agrees that, uh, mm -hmm. that we could, along with the mayor, we, we've got some room there to help. Commissioner Case and I, I think that's an awesome idea. Um, and uh, Matthew said that he will follow up on that to um, see how that can uh, be brought to pass. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Mayor, any other uh, commissioners, any comments? No, um, I'd love to see some of the um, vehicles that the city purchases so that the kids can see, you know, what's the latest and greatest with fire trucks and police cars and that kind of thing. And just, I think, having our police force and our first responders out there as much as possible during, during those events, I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Also, Mr. Mayor, as well as the um, the educators, yeah. Yeah. We have fun games and different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our giant pong now. Mm -hmm. We can. Director uh, Director Hill, thank you so much for your work. Um, this is amazing information. I love the eight hundred events over ninety nine thousand people. That's just you know insane numbers to be able to continually put together and bring people to our downtown area. So thank you for that. I just got a, a, a playful kind of question. When we take on these kind of cook-offs and things, whether it's a barbecue cook-off or anything like that, do we tie into actual competition barbecue or competition, any of those things, or do we just kind of have a one-off? No, uh, Jennifer has been talking with the uh, barbecue competition circuit people to uh, see how we can get into that um, that circuit. Perfect, because I, I know during my time when I worked for Senator Chambliss, um, Vienna, Georgia, which is mm -hmm. extremely small, has a huge barbecue competition and people come from all the way around. So I think plugging into that competition side is pretty cool if we can. So I appreciate the work that you guys are doing there. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, thank you, Director. Here, we appreciate that update, and uh, we say uh, keep 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 the good work uh, going, and keep those uh, investments coming in. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We'll move on to item number five: appointments, uh, boards, and authority. Uh, we will. I'll hand off at this time uh, to the mayor. Um, items five one and five two. Five one being Glenn County Board of Health. Uh, one appointment, which is uh, the mayoral appointment, uh, and item number two, uh, the Urban Redevelopment Agency, uh, one appointment, which is also the mayor's appointment. Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem Harris, and I, I'll always lean into the, to the wisdom of the council. I know we want to make sure we get this right. The Glenn County Board of Health um, would be, I will be appointing myself um, what I always question is making sure I don't know if we need um, commission approval of that appointment. So I always like to lean in just to make sure is this a direct appointment or do we need commission approval? That's a direct appointment. Okay, that, that's perfect. So I will uh, appoint myself there. And then for the Urban Redevelopment Agency, um, I would like to appoint um, uh, or put before your consideration, uh, Mr. Andrew Smith. Um, he uh, came into the office. I had a chance to meet with him and talk with him about uh, the work he's already done in the community and, and his family living in the community, um, his, his care for the community and his expertise in being able to help us, uh, I think, on, on the URA. Um, so I, I would like to put him uh, before you for consideration. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's your appointment, um, okay. so it, it, it doesn't have to be um, voted on by the uh, commission. Wonderful. So I, I would like to appoint uh, Mr. Andrew Smith um, to, to the URA, so I, I appreciate him for his service. And with that, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I'll turn it back over to you for 5-3. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate, uh, we appreciate that. And we'll move forward with 5-3. Um, which is the tree board, uh, which is one appointment. Uh, we have two interested parties for consideration to fill the vacant seat of Joanne Lee, uh, whose term expires 10-1-2023. Uh, so these uh, two interested persons or parties 
are Suzanne Johnston, as well as Adam Jacobs. And so I will lend to the commission, what is your pleasure? The silence is uh, meaning that we're considering the party, so. Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not like uh, no. I would like to put this for for you know just consideration. I, I don't have um, any full background on on either outside of their wonderful resumes that both of them sent in, and I appreciate their their willingness. and And I hope whomever we pick, we can stay in touch with the other as we have a lot of vacancies um, in our boards to really engage our citizens. Um, just reading the you know background of of Miss Johnston, um, her coming from an environmental science background and and you know that proven track record of being able to work in that space um, is something that is seemingly important to, to, to what we're talking about on the tree board. So um, I, I would like to offer that just as good information um, kind of in what I'm seeing. Um, I don't wanna preclude anyone and I know I, I, I don't think I can make the nomination, but I just wanted to say as I read through that seemed like a strong point for uh, Ms. Johnston. I would agree, and I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve Sue Johnston to step in for the um, unexpired term of Joanna Lee on the tree board. Second. We have a, a motion made and a second. I'll call for a vote. Those in favor by the sign of aye. 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 Opposers have the same right. There being none, I give that an aye as well, and that motion carries unanimously. So uh, we know uh, as staff, uh, Ms. Uh, Atkinson will be in contact with uh, Ms. Susan uh, Johnston to inform her of her appointment. Thank you so much. Okay. We'll move on to the uh, consent agenda items. Item number six, uh, we will consider approval of the March 2nd, 2022 regular scheduled meeting minutes. Uh, those were in our packets. Uh, if anyone needs any time to review, if not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. A motion has been made and second uh, to approve the minutes as presented. Uh, I call for a vote. Those in favor by the sign of aye. 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 Opposers have the same right. There being none, that motion to uh, also carries unanimously. Items to consider for approval. Item number seven, uh, consider approval of contract with Republic Services of Georgia LP for sanitation collection services, including garbage collection, recycling collection, yard waste collection, and bulk pickups. Uh, presenting to us on item number seven is our illustrious city manager, Ms. McDuffie, and Mr. Garrison, our illustrious director of public works. If you two would come forward. Well, Mayor Pro Tem, can I keep my seat here? I have my computer. Okay. Um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to come before you with this information. I am going to request that the actual consideration for approval be deferred until the next meeting because we were working on the contract and had to make sure that everything was done properly. And I was hoping to get that sent out when the agenda went out, but it did not get sent out. So we will be sending out the actual contract agreement um, before the next meeting agenda is set and also the resolution for the approval of the fees that are set for that contract. The uh, um, fees are in the document here that you all have before you. So most of the information the contract is not going to change that much. We had, um, I think the last time I made a presentation, we talked about doing the recycling by subscription. And that was something that we looked at, but we determined that it would be 
difficult based on our billing practices and things um, to, uh, I guess, administer that. So we decided not to do by subscription, but what we are going to do, because when we started looking at this process, of course, you know um, that we were having issues with just the trash pickup, the bulk waste pickup, the yard pickup. So most of what we learned during this process is that it, it, it's kind of like, and I think in your package you have information where I tried to identify the responsibilities that we all have in this. The city has responsibilities, Republic under their contract has responsibilities and the residents have responsibilities. And so we felt like we needed to do an education campaign to help try to, I guess, bring all those things together. Because a lot of times when um, there's, you know, the waste is not picked up or a bin is left, it's because it's either sitting in the wrong place, it may have been placed late, um, and there's a, you know, areas where because of the use of the automated trucks, they can't pick things up if it's too close to a mailbox or too close to a tree or an electrical wire. So we felt like um, to help with that process, we needed to educate the public more on what responsibilities that they have. I'm not saying that all of the waste pickup miss is, is the public's fault because we did, you know, we do have, have had conversations with Republic and there is a penalty in the contract where if they don't pick it up within a 24 hour period, you know, there is a penalty. So they will have some responsibility in that as well. Uh, again, going to the yard waste and what, um, you know, where it should be placed on the side of the road, when the pickup will be and holding Republic uh, to that weekly pickup is something that we also discuss. The other item was the bulk pickup and what this was, one of the changes that were made to the contract, instead of having two per year, we will have monthly bulk pickups for every resident, at, but it's a, a call-in service. So again, we need to educate the public on them calling to say, I have a pickup, you know, and they will have 12 pickups a year that they can put things on the side of their, I guess, on the side of the curve and be picked up on a monthly basis. Is that number straight to Republic? Um, Gero, yeah, I think that number is to Becky. Yes, sir. If yes. they call it number 3703, you call it Becky's office. Yeah, it's to our office. Um, and, and again, even, you know, we have been tracking complaints and we do have that tracking system that will be continued as a practice and be monitored very closely to so that we can respond and have, um, you know, things changed if needed. Um, in response to some of the um, complaints that we have. But we will be putting together the contract in your packet. It shows the rates that will be charged and that rate increase um, will be about $40 for our residential customers um, added to their annual bill that's sent out with the taxes. And we will be sending out another, we'll have some education um, going out now, we'll be doing some press releases. We want to do some public announcement, radio announcements. We'll do website and social media, um, and then have some information going directly, mail outs to the residents, and also some door hangers. So we're going to try our best to inform people on how the recycling, what's acceptable with recycling, um, go through all of what the requirements are and try and get them to make sure they have pit, putting their bins out in the right places and there's no obstructions around them. And we're hoping that this will help um, with the cleanliness and with the orderliness of our uh, waste management, as well as, you know, the trash, the yard trash and the bulk pickup, as I said before, hopeful that uh, one, holding Republic to making sure those weekly pickups are done and then on the bulk pickup, making sure that they're done, you know, in an orderly man manner based on the call-ins. Um, what, what's the time, if, if we're out driving around and we notice a pile of, of household goods at a particular 
property address on Monday and we drive by and we see it again on Wednesday. Um, what, what's, what's the anticipated length of time from when someone calls in a pickup of household goods to when it would be picked up? In other words, you know, do, do we, <laughs> I don't want to call Becky and say, you know, there's, there's household goods at such and such an address and she's already received the call, but it takes them three days, four days, whatever. Typically those are scheduled for the following Saturday. You see the files for this during the week, send it to a public and they pick that up on Saturday. On Saturday. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. So if we see it the same pile the following week, then something's right. it, it either didn't get called in or yeah. Okay. Right. So, yeah, they would not need the uh illegal pick illegal pile rather than a small pickup. Okay. Okay. A couple of uh, mattresses that sat out on Norman and uh, Hoffman there in that illegal dump that's been there for years. They were there for three weeks. They got picked up. And would you please the next day there was another mattress there in place for two. That's a true story. I'm telling you what's the truth. I said, and I called several times and finally I called back to be sure that the message was being received. I still haven't heard back, but that's okay. The mattress has got picked up. But I'm telling you what's the truth. If you don't get that stuff up, it's gonna we'll, we'll never get ahead of it. We never will. The only way to get it is expeditiously. When it's out there, it's got to be gotten somehow if we're ever going to have a clean city. It's just there's no if, ands, or but. By the way, those two mattresses garnered several tires also. So the yeah. folks that are dumping see that stuff and they see is on anything that's out there, they're going to add to it. So somehow we, I, I know it's, I know where we are limitation wise, but we've just got to reach out there and keep reaching. What we've got to do. So, is it communicated when someone calls in that the pickup won't, won't occur until Saturday? Is, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, if I was to address it tomorrow, will the trash be moved this upcoming Saturday or the 26th? This upcoming Saturday. Okay. Because I have, I probably see about 20 pals like every day from me going home to work and it, it's the same, the same, the same. And like Commissioner Casey said, it's just, you they move garbage and then it gets removed and then people just put it back because they think it's a dumping spot right. um and when you mentioned communication about the trash pickup even with social media if we just remind residents that even if you borrow someone's truck you can dump for like 25 dollars just to tell them to you know put mattresses and furnitures on the side of the road is not you know the way to go like some type of cleanup campaign or something because it's going to continue to happen, especially in my area, and it's just it's sickening. It's just yeah, not just good to look at. Right. right. Because I'm just going to make an assumption that they're not aware, so we just have to keep reminding them. So okay. you know, it, it's not just the streets; so it's the cemetery. The same way, if, if we don't get that stuff up out in the cemeteries out there, it's just going to be piled up out there. And so. Uh, we, we need to be sure that, that we get regular pickup out there. So somebody's really paying attention. We got people out there that should be doing that. You know, there shouldn't be any, any, any problem there. It needs some more supervision. It really does out there. I got one question, Regina, on the backdoor service. Backdoor service used to be with a doctor's prescription. That's how it is in our contract. What it says is it, it, it makes it open here. You might want to be sure to put in here with uh, a doctor. Okay. Uh, I, I thought that was with the it. So where are you reading? Because I think in the actual contract, I'm it does the say. Proposed annual cost of services for each property owner. 
uh, it starts with residential service and then bottoms out at backdoor service, no charge. And just backdoor service with a prescription, no charge. Okay. Just to clarify. Thank you. And you all have copies of the mail out that we're sending out. And it has a lot of information in it. We were trying to minimize, but it was hard to, you know, include everything, but we're hoping that it will be effective. And to your point, Commissioner Roll, we want to have a continuous process because I think that is important to try and keep the public aware and keep them kind of motivated to, to do better. Um, also the recycling, you know, we are going to monitor that very closely so that if there is contaminated contamination detected, um, that we will remove that car from that, that place and possibly replace with a garbage cart, but we definitely will remove the recycling cart so it won't um, cause further contamination in our waste streams. And how does it work? Um, Commissioner Roll was just asking me too, if it's either a multifamily dwelling or apartments as far as each individual tenant um, being able to call in for household goods? Does it have to be the landlord, the property owner? And then how do they get charged for their sanitation services? Is it each individual tenant unit or is it the whole? Are you asking about for a bulk pickup or? Well, really both. Regular, regular trash. Yeah, and a, regular I, I, sanitation and then also a bulk pickup. For the bulk pickups, the, the residents can call. We don't, you know, check ownership or anything. We just call call and give us the address as a resident. And we'll, okay. we'll come pick it up. So every resident of that building could call. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, the one per month that figured or tracked by address. Mm -hmm. um, same, same, I guess, sort of with the, the service in general, it's, it's tracked by address. So you would call and, and apply for your service at a particular address, which it may be 101, 103, 105, even though they may be all in the same building. So each, um, each even one. though they don't pay property taxes, ad valorem tax, so they're not going to get. They would get an individual they individual would. cart. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. If it's so, a large, so, oh, I'm sorry. Could I, I know. I have a I have a root of, of that question. I don't know if it may be the same um, uh, area, um, but uh, the complex on Wolf Street, um, each of those tenants have trash cans. Why is there not a single um, dumpster there instead of everybody having a trash can? So now that presents a problem um, when when everyone's not putting their trash out at the same time. And so that has been a problematic consistent problem uh, there. So I, I'm wondering why there isn't just one large dumpster. And there are places like that that do have a dumpster and that's sort of the, the owners or the landlords preference as to, as to which way some places have switched over to a, to a dumpster for that building or for that complex. What's, what's our requirement? Our requirement is that every property in the city has solid waste removal but it does provide certain exemptions and it's for multifamily and commercial properties. So for example, the shopping center where Target is, they, so long as they provide proof to the city that they have a contract in place to provide solid waste removal, then they can be exempted from that, our particular cost. On Wolf Street, four or five units had each individual that that landlord could have, or the owner of that property could have applied to the city showing that he has placed a um, dumpster on the property and be exempted from the um, ad valorem property tax charge. So it's it's a- Individualized. Right, it's just if the property owner elects to use a commercialized, private commercial solid waste removal contract. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to apply some further consideration on that. Um, cause we need to apply sensibility to some of this stuff. 
and consistency to some of it to make sure that um, everyone is operating under the same uh, understanding uh, because that, that property has been a nuisance property. Um, and we've had a lot of problems with, with trash from that specific area. And so that we need to make sure that that's being addressed and whomever needs to be held accountable needs to be held accountable. That may be something that we can look at Okay. I just gone through in, in Fernandina Beach, we had a dumpster for our uh, association, and uh, they had just made us go to individual parks. Individual parks. Sure they, which is uh, to me ludicrous, but it happened. I hired a lawyer to find it, and I got nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. But uh, it, it happened. But uh, also, one of the things I want to ask about, and again, this is for you. According to what I have looked at here, we have two bids for our sanitation. Yes. Why only two bids? Why can't we get more participation? I really, I mean, we sent out information to several um, vendors and we advertised and made sure, and we sent some direct um, request for proposals, but I mean, I, I can't, um, I guess, answer that. I know the county did the same thing and they only got one bid. Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know, did you reach out to people? Did they, did people actually submit something back to us saying that they would not bid? I'm not sure. I would have to check with Allie to see if she got responses based on, but we did try and reach out as much as possible to companies that we know were um, operating in the area. We held a pre-proposal pre meeting and four contractors attended that, four vendors attended that. And so two of those elected not to bid for whatever reason. Were, were they sent invitations or did you reach out to those people? We re I know we, one of them was waste management that attended but didn't bid. So we reached out to them directly. I don't remember the other one. I wasn't familiar with them. So um, I'm not sure how they learned of it, if it was sent directly to them or we, not. We did make an effort we did. To, to have response, appropriate response. Certainly, but certainly. To me, one or mm -hmm. two on something of this magnitude is, is not appropriate. And we need to show that we have made every effort that we possibly can to make this a competitive situation and to make one that people are willing to come here and want to do business with that are in the, in the, in the field of uh, waste management. No pun intended, waste management is number one in the industry, but uh, they are. And we had been here at one time. They, they didn't perform. I appreciate you reaching out to people. I really do. And I think that's strong to show in here and what we have had to read. And I'm reaching forward here because I've been told some folks can't hear me because I have to go away from the microphone. So y'all excuse me, it's a bit of a, a difficulty for me to sit up and sit back, but I'm going to try and make an effort. If you ever see me where I'm not doing it, please ask me just to get closer to the microphone. I don't mind. It's not intentional that I back away. But, uh, it, it is a medical situation. I, I, I don't mean to back away from anybody that I'm addressing. I really don't. But uh, thank you, Gary, for reaching out to you. Yes, but it would be good to document it in here, and perhaps even putting the bid tabulation form in here for everybody that's not aware of those. You know, the, who you have contacted, where they are, uh, and who you contacted, that sort of thing. Okay. Probably, uh, thanks. All right. Thank you, um, Director Gero and uh... City Commissioner McDuffie, um, before we move off this item, I'll open it up and see if the mayor has any comments or questions that he may have. If he has none, then we um, will proceed on in the meeting. Mayor Pro Tem, no questions. I appreciate you. Okay. All right. With that being said, uh, we've come, uh, the mayor, um, we're going to open up this space to the mayor um, to address uh, the first responders package. Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem. I, I first want to say thank you to the commission. Um, I know each and every uh, one of us have had conversations about um, bringing forth a first responders package to focus on not only retaining 
uh, the officers we had, we have, but also to ensure that we have a strong uh, foundation of retention. We know uh, over the, you know, I would say maybe past year or so, we have seen, um, or maybe a few years, we've seen a steady decline uh, of, of officers, not only just leaving Brunswick, but also leaving uh, our force and going to our next door neighbors, which means, uh, spoke to, I think the commission as a whole, that we have a little bit of a competitiveness issue. Um, and what I would want to say is that we are working diligently um, and we will be, I think, ready to bring forth a first responders package that has some significant incentives and significant pay raises, not only for our police officers, but also our, for our fire persons. So I, I want to thank uh, directly both of the chiefs for working with us and getting us some good information. Thank you to uh, City Manager McDuffie uh, for, for really uh, going to work on some of the numbers and going to work as we continue to fine tune it and as we bring it before um, the finance committee, but also thank you to every single uh, commissioner who shared their ideas, shared their wisdom about how we get this done. And uh, we look forward to working that through the process um, here throughout this month to be able to bring it forth uh, in April. So I thank everyone for their work on this issue, but especially to our officers, um, who work day to day protecting the city to our fire people who work day to day protecting the city and we're going to do all we can to undergird you all's mission so thank you so much mayor Pro Tem. all right thank you mr mayor are there any other comments questions or concerns pertaining to the first responders package the proposed or the package that's being proposed for the first responders any other comments concerns anything miss mcduffie any, no, no comment. Thank you. Anything else to be presented in that area? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. With that being said and confirmed, we have come to the end of our printed agenda. Uh, are there any other items we need to address? Is there a need for executive session? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mo motion to, to adjourn and second. Uh, all in favor by a show of I, by a say of aye. Aye. Opposed aye. have the same right. There being none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you for attending. Have a great evening. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, guys.